In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. There is a commandment in the Holy Bible that seems to be very far from us. It is pray without ceasing, or men ought to always pray. This seems to be far from achievable because when we pray 15 minutes, we consider that we've prayed while God wants us to pray all the time. How do we do that? And our fathers, the saints, by their experience, said that prayer is the most important work in a man's life. Because of this, you notice that we say to him in the bedtime prayer, For in death there is no one who is remembering you, and in Hades who is able to confess you. It's as if we do not want to die, just because we do not want to stop praying. That is because prayer is the most important work, more important than any other work, accomplishments, and relationships. Because of that, the Father said that the two things that Satan fights the most are prayer and love. Because of these two things that will uh, make you go into heaven. Our issue now is that all of us are praying, but we want to pray more and deeper. Because this is change. If everyone's relationship with God became stronger through prayer that is stronger, deeper, and longer, his whole life will be different. And it will be easy for him to do whatever it is that God wants him to do. Because the more someone prays, the more God moves him like a chess piece. The less someone prays, the more you find him interlocked with the earth. Meaning, God wants to move him, but he can't, because this person is following his own mind, his own thoughts, his own ideas. So our topic is, how can we be changed to servants who love prayer, and who make prayer to be for them the most important work that concerns them the whole day and in all circumstances? First, we start with Luke 18. The parable that our Lord Jesus Christ tells us, he says, And he spoke a parable unto them to this end, that men ought to always pray and not lose heart. We can see in the beginning of the speech that God knows that we're going to get bored. So if anyone says, I get bored, I daydream, son, that's normal. Our Lord Jesus himself said that it is okay, but it ought to be. Meaning, tighten yourself up to reach praying without boredom saying, There was in a city a judge, who feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. To make us love prayer, by the way, our Lord Jesus was often telling parables about himself that were not so nice. Meaning, the unjust judge here is here instead of God. What he wants to say is if in the end the unjust judge will avenge the widow because of a little persistent whining, then what about with me, who am kind? Will your persistence not bring you an advantage with me? If this lady, by just a little whining, got what she wanted, then what about with me, who am waiting for your prayers? When you cry to me, will you not gain a lot? Then God gave us a parable that shows us the effect that continuous prayer has, even with a tough person. So how much more, rather, will it be, will it have an effect with such a loving God as our God? From here, our teacher Paul, who was considered as one who loved continuous prayer the most, said to pray without ceasing. And he who says, says that knows what he's talking about because he reached it, he experienced it. Continuous prayer was not just for our monks like St. Anthony and St. Macarius, who taught us continuous prayer. No, but our fathers, the apostles, of course, tasted it. He said, Pray without ceasing. And before him also the prophet Daniel said in the psalm, In return from my love they are my accusers, but I give myself to prayer. Do you know why this verse is beautiful? When you offer love that is met with animosity, it's confusing and straining and annoying. I offer you love and you meet with animosity? Really? The thoughts go left and right. No, no, no. It does not matter. Animosity or not, I give myself to what? To prayer. Whether people love me or not, that's not the issue. As for me, I give myself to prayer. If they receive my love with love, I will pray. If they receive my love with animosity, I will pray. If they respect me, I will pray. If they curse me, I will pray. If the world is running smoothly, I will pray. If the world is falling apart, I will pray. I will pray no matter what I will pray. I will pray means I will pray. I give myself to prayer. All the great fathers knew that the most important thing is that a person grow in the area of praying. We sometimes remain in a state of no change or for 10 or 20 years. 
If you ask someone, what is your rule for prayer? He says to you, I say our Father who art in heaven in the morning and at night. Is that your prayer rule? Since the time you were in preschool, for example? Come on, increase it a little bit. He says, oh, we've improved. We, we say two psalms now. Okay, good. But the other psalms have no place in your, in your prayer rule now? When will you say, I give myself to prayer? When will you say, pray without ceasing? When will you listen to the commandment that says that men ought to always pray and not faint? When God says something to us, he says it for our benefit, not our detriment. The commandments of God are gifts. Why? Because he knows that when you pray more, your life will be more beautiful. Your happiness will be more. Your peace will be more. You are the one who benefits. God does not lack prayers. He has respectful angels and archangels praying day and night. But we will win when we pray more.